Hello and welcome to Star Trek is Life. In this video I wanted to take a look at the role of Ferengi women. This will be part two of our two-part series. If you haven't watched part one yet, please do that now. So in part one we discussed how the Ferengi culture is misogynistic and patriarchal. They didn't allow their women to wear clothes or earn profit. So Ferengi women did not have many rights at all. However, things were about to change. By the late 24th century, females made up 53.5% of the Ferengi population, and some Ferengi began to realize that exclusion of females from businesses represented a significant loss of profit opportunities. In the latter half of the century, Ishka, or Quark's mother, and Grad Nagus Zek had a movement aimed at reforming cultural traditions that had excluded women, starting by giving females the right to wear clothing. The idea was that giving females that right allowed them to have pockets. Once they had pockets, they would want to fill them with latinum, so they were going to need jobs. After they started earning latinum, they were going to want to spend it, which meant Ferenginar would expand its workforce and consumer base at the same time. Initial progress toward this goal seemed less than promising, but by 2375, with the ascension of the progressive Rom to the position of Grand Nagus, the likelihood of other reforms seemed inevitable. Because of the long-standing ban on acquisition of profit by females, any female wishing to engage in commerce had to either bury evidence of her involvement in a transaction or appear as a male. Notably, Pell not only altered the manner of her attire, but also disguised her breasts and the size of her lobes in order to be included in Quark's financial decision-making. Using this disguised appearance, she was involved in the first recorded business transaction between the Alpha and Gamma Quadrants, a contract that would likely not have been concluded without her input, making it the all-time most significant financial achievement by any Ferengi female. Her skill in successfully negotiating the contract between the Ferengi and the Karema later had a profound impact on the entire Alpha Quadrant. It provided the basis for the Federation to make first contact with the Founders, which in turn led to the Dominion War. Quark himself was later involved in an even more significant instance of cross-dressing, one which therefore fundamentally altered the nature of Ferengi society. After Grand Nagus Zek attempted to give women the right to wear clothes, he was immediately displaced from power by Brunt and forced to set up a government in exile on Deep Space Nine. While there, Zek tried to convince top Ferengi businessmen to join him for a conference to demonstrate the intelligence of women, using Ishka as an example. When she collapsed after suffering a heart attack, Quark had to fake being a female, Lumba, so as to impress Nilva, an ultra-conservative manufacturer of Sluggo Cola. Drink Sluggo Cola, the slightest cola in the galaxy. Quark received gender reassignment surgery for the occasion, which was reversed afterwards. Quark's Lumba sufficiently influenced Nilva to call for and get the immediate reinstatement of Zek as Nagus, and Zek's women's right agenda therefore continued. And that, my Star Trek of friends, is part two of our two-part series discussing the role of Ferengi women. If you appreciate the information presented in this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. And remember, Star Trek is life.